<laughs> Alright, so guys, um, and I immediately have to cough. Um, we're doing a, a point of view demo of a, a student today in the um, Ghost Academy. We are following a Matrix, and I believe Psycho and Sharklight, you are both in the match as well, who are also from the Academy. Um, as I've explained to the to the people in the class, I'm currently ill with Corona, so my uh, energy levels might be a little lower than normal, but um, it should still be uh, be good. We decided to go with Ancient today simply because, um, yeah, we did an Anubis session uh, last week, and I hear from the guys that uh, they've been getting a lot of information on Vertigo. So Anub uh, well, Ancient seemed like a like a good place to go. Um, I think we're gonna skip the knife round but what i will try to do as i also mentioned to you guys um we will mostly focus on matrix like his decision making and uh what's good what's bad but also there will always be an element of the overall like the team game so um if uh, i see something that you guys as a team are doing wrong i will i will mention it um Otherwise, it would be mostly uh, point of view focused. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah? Go ahead. What phase level is uh, Matrix right now? I'm level uh, 10, 2.2 uh, kilo. This lobby is right. like average level 8, 9, I think. Alright. Okay. That's good to know as well, yeah. So, first of all, Matrix. You play a lot of mid normally? Like, are you playing rotation in this match or are you playing mid? Uh, I usually play uh, cave, but uh, this time I, like, with our team comp, I don't think anybody else was, like, really confident on mid. And since I'm, like, the highest yellow guy, I chose to fill in that position. Yeah. Okay. And do you feel like you have a good understanding of mid? Uh, not, I mean,. Kinda. I know how to take it, uh, but I don't know. No, not 100%, like 70%. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Nice. So, uh, also just. You guys probably don't know it because I haven't really done point of view demos with you before. But if I'm just full silent, it's just because I'm taking in the round, right? Um, so I mean, you guys can <coughs> you guys can ask questions, but you can also just sit and watch. Um, uh, it's it's good that you get one kill here and go down. Well, like it's not good that you die, of course, but it's good that you manage to get at least one kill. Uh, one thing that I want to highlight, I probably need to go a little bit back because of the way the demo system works in this game. Um, one thing that I particularly like about this is that as your teammate dies on B, you don't hesitate at all to like take these fly uh, fights. And I think this is a really big thing because if you play too passive here and you allow the T's to um, push long together, like playing passive here and letting your teammate uh, play alone long is really bad. So you taking these fights early is really good. It's kind of the only way you're going to win a round, and um, at this point it kind of just comes down to aim duels. And you do win one, but then you lose the second. So, but it's still, it's the right decision made in this, uh, in this round, I think. Yeah, here's this just not so much you can do. I, I mean... From a team perspective, you guys should probably have been a little bit more synchronized in when you throw the nades. And also uh, pushing down together. Because now it became something weird in between. Where some people are staying back on the side. And you are kind of pushing uh, banana alone. But again, that's kind of something team specific. So now you're not playing mid anymore. Uh, yeah, I switched up because, I don't know, sometimes when we lose position, I try to like see where our weak points are, so I can like hold it well, but I should have stayed mid, I think. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly the round. Maybe somebody okay. called out, they want, they want to go mid, not sure. 
is this something you do like also when you play your own elo or is this something you do because you feel like you have to carry i feel like because this is a little lower elo game uh i i usually on my own elo usually people stay on their own positions and unless it's not working out then we call it out the switch but yeah i don't know this game it was like i i went I think I went like a cave few rounds or slash B, and then I came back to mid later when we started losing mid hard. Yeah, but yeah. I should have stayed in my position maybe. Um, hang on. Uh, well, I I think uh, I agree with you. You should have stayed in your own position. Um, I don't think it's necessarily bad to try to even the skill by taking a position that probably would be hit a lot. Like for example, if you were the high elo player and you would be focusing on playing A. I would say that's probably a mistake because that's a site that normally doesn't get that much action. Um, playing B or playing mid will give you probably a lot more action. And so what I tend to do when I want to carry a match is I will try to play the rotation role. Because if you play the rotation role, you um, can play more on feeling and you have more the ability to maximize your impact basically um, that's why i think you playing mid would be better because you could help with the mid fight at the start and then you could immediately rotate b for example if you think you, b needs uh, strengthening instead of starting on b uh, if that makes sense i agree this is a good flash though and a good peek and a nice kill as well and you did a good job blocking with your smoke and you got pressure. Did you like are you playing cave or are you playing ram in this round? You wanted mm. to play cave, right? Yeah, I think I want to go cave, but the I saw like them push early, so I decided to stay on default. Yeah, yeah. I think um let me go back a little bit. <coughs> oh, I need a little bit more back. Um, so I think uh, what you're doing here is pretty good. Like, you want to go cave, but now instead you think, okay, it's a B rush. I want to block this. I think this flash and everything is good. Like, you're doing a great job blocking, and it's really important you get this one kill. But I think now when... Uh, if we look at the radar, I believe someone of your team dies, right? That's number two. So a really common reaction in this scenario, when the T's are in front of cave and they got blocked really hard on B, if they kill the donut player, they know now that there is maximum one on A. Um, and so a really common reaction here would be to rush down mid, go donut and hit A immediately. And I think you should be better in this round at uh, recognizing that this is the play that's happening because uh, you end up waiting out your smoke and there's just so much chilling here. Um, when honestly, the decision for the T's, it's pretty obvious. And now, even later, you start pushing down banana, you know, but this is way too late. Now you clear out B. Okay, it's not B. And now you have to rotate, but the T is already planning on A side. So... I think here you you could have uh, you you had the the cards on hand to realize what the T's were most likely to do here, and you did. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, I'm low HP. I don't know. I could not see it, but mm, I think I'm okay. low HP. So that's why I went for the AK to get those hatchets. Okay, but I'm but, not sure if I'm. But still, it's it's like this round. It should be pretty unwinnable right now. Like, and I think the the difference between an AK and an M4 won't be big enough to warrant you sort of wasting i mean i'm saying wasting i don't mean to be uh, rude or mean or anything like that obviously it's just more like you could have rotated potentially 12 seconds earlier or something like this and that might have made a like that would make a bigger impact in my head than you having an ak or an m4 for example i totally agree yeah that's good we're on the same page then um but part of it this is also uh, i believe it was you Sharkfly. Like, you could also recognize this probably a little bit faster. And I think if you would also recognize that they were going to rush A completely, maybe you could make it to the corner of CT 
and hold like the donut angle and get one free kill and then fall back or something like this. That could also potentially have changed the round. Um, but yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but it's one of those things that probably sets aside like a like a 3k elo or a 4k or like a like a like a 3k elo and a 2k elo, you know, like uh, being able to read yeah. the game like that. Here as well, I think if you guys want to contest mid on pistols, one of you gotta buy a smoke. Cause if you if you see how the T's are actually playing it, if you just smoke deep, you would actually win the whole mid fight just with one smoke. And what that also forces them to do is that you force them to make a decision. Most of the time in CS, it's really smart if you can do something that forces your opponent to make a decision. Cause if you don't smoke, they can just keep holding this like uh, AWP angle and they have full information mid. Um, if you smoke, they have to decide either to give up all of mid or play in front of the mid smoke. And giving up mid is not that nice of a feeling when you are playing against pistols and you have buy. Like it's not that bad either, but you would prefer to hang on to, to like a lot of information. Um, but playing in front of the mid smoke is like kind of setting them in a trap where you can actually kill them if they decide to play in front. Um, now it's just one-on-one -on -one fights and it's a nice shot by Psycho, but it's pretty tough. <coughs> Holy shit. Yeah, get next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that can happen. Doesn't really matter. But yeah, I think... Uh, a mid smoke here would have done you guys a lot of good, even though it's such a small investment. So, are you going back to playing mid now, or like playing rotation? Yeah, I think I played the mid for most of the city side now. Like, okay. it was all over the place, but yeah. I think this was like our main setup for the rest of the game was two mid. Yeah, two I a think so. I think so. Two, uh, two mid, two B, one A. Yeah. Uh, give me one second, guys. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, let's do something real quick. But yeah, that makes sense as well. I think it's a good setup. Do you guys have like a plan for how you take mid as a default? I mean, double molly, uh, flash the left box, and then smoke heaven. When we have a mid control, then we can sneak up on heaven. That was my at least plan. I don't know if it's smoke good. heaven. Uh, yeah, I don't know. In lower elo, they like to like insta push heaven. So, oh. I don't know, but I, maybe it's a misplay. I'm not that confident on this position. As I said, I'm mainly a cave player. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's fine. Like, what I would do, typically, uh, I'm not expecting everyone to know these smokes. I don't even know them. But you can do uh, spawn smokes from it. And yeah. if you know this smoke, I would recommend doing it basically every round. Um, I think as long as you smoke mid, uh, you can kind of be uh, okay with using just one Molotov because if you smoke deep and you Molotov by bouncing it off this back wall and it lands here it will maybe spread in an area like this maybe a little bit bigger something like that and that means if he is out mid he's kind of stuck in this one corner that's why when you run out mid if you flash behind a box he is uh, unable to dodge this flash and you can swing with the flash and kill him uh, or clear mid um, and then as soon as you've smoked and molotov and, and potentially flashed if you feel like it's necessary and you've peaked this, that's when I would say one guy uh, stays and holds mid and the other guy he can kind of swing and hold heaven like that. Um, then you have headshot angles. Uh, this is your job in my opinion in mid, but if you have a good cave player who knows how to play uh, cave, uh, he shouldn't like the T should never be able to get to heaven without you knowing. Um, this is like a really important information. And one thing I can teach you guys is that uh, in my previous teams, we had like a keyword which was a keyword that really stood out. So if the T's could go from, from B to mid this way, or if the T's could go from mid to B this way, then we would use the word, uh, well, in one of my teams, we call it devil. Because you never use the word devil in Counter-Strike. And the whole point was that, like, 
heaven uh, devil so it was it kind of made sense but i had it in a later team that we just said apple uh and it's also because you never use the word apple um it doesn't really matter what word you use it just needs to be one that's very uncommon in counter-strike so just instead of saying oh they can run across cave go heaven to mid you know you just say apple and then the mid players realize okay boom now they can they can cross um so like here you guys again run into the problem of if you look at the the mid player here even though you've done double molotovs uh and he two flashes you actually have not taken mid control from them at all like this orb can still hold this angle and as long as he can hold this he knows that he can uh like he but he kind of has mid control now if he would not suck he would absolutely kill you here and that's why this mid smoke is so damn important because um with the mid smoke you make it so that the t's don't get any free information i also think like smoking heaven is in general just not a good idea because that's typically something you want to have the t's be afraid of if you a ct smoke off heaven for them every round that makes their cave control a million times easier so uh, I, I agree yeah i i i recommend doing it this way that you do a deep mid smoke use a molotov use a flash and you just fucking fight for it um that's what i would do But this I like from you, you get into a good position, I think you could go closer to your teammate Psycho, but now you are in the trading position, that's good. And you win around, yeah, that's my blade. I like, uh, I'm not gonna go back because it keeps fucking up a little bit, but I like that you take the decision to go uh, from heaven and into cave, that way you are closer to B-side and you're able to actually do some trades. If you would stay outside heaven, it would be much harder for you to have any impact in this round. So here again, you see what the T is doing? He's jiggling, he's waiting for the flash. Now the flash comes, now it peaks. You again have not done a very good job at actually denying the T's mid control. Because as soon as this Molotov fades, the T knows, okay, you're not Cubby. You didn't push right side, so he can just walk out. And if the T's would just do a window smoke, they could just take mid for free every round. So, it's... Uh, yeah, so one elbow smoke wins us mid every round. Yeah. Or it's like kind of what we talked about, if any of you were here for the... I know some of you were, but for the like the session with the pressure lines, that um, by you smoking elbow, if you're not holding the elbow smoke, the T could just as well go through it, right? But because he doesn't know, he's not going to do it. So that's the only difference here is that by you smoking elbow, you're just removing the T's. Like you're giving them so much uh, less information about how you're playing mid, where you're playing in mid. And that's really the key. Because it makes the, the retaking of mid much more difficult for the T. This I also really like. It's looking good. That's a good kill from uh, the T, but uh, I like again, you are so willing to fight in these angles. Like, uh, it's the same I said, <coughs> it's the same I said in the pistol round, but like, if you would not fight these angles and your teammate would die long before you get kills, the round is over anyway. Um, so your willingness to fight here is really good. Let me see if I can find you. There we go. So again here, I mean it's the same thing every round and I'm just showing it again to, to show how important this is. No no mid smoke, he peeks. And it's a free kill. Like you somehow managed to get a kill which is really impressive. But now again, he moves out. And that's again really well played by you Sharkfly. Uh, but the potential for him to do it is there. Like if I'm the T playing against you guys and I see you guys never smoke mid, I would say, guys, let's be three or four outside mid. They never smoke it and let's just contact out immediately after. Because on a round like this, they know you guys cannot play AWP because you don't have money for it. And uh, because of that, that's just a free a free call to abuse. The fact that you guys are not smoking mid. Um, 
We'll see if you learn from your mistake later. Oh, this time the action is had to go aggressive. So this is like... It's good by you that you get the kill, but this is also clearly a, a bad move by the T. Because you guys are um, countering the fast plays with the HE Molotov basically every round. And this guy is actually like the Tiger P. He's the guy who actually knows that you guys are blocking it hard in the beginning. And leaving it late. So, or like leaving it immediately after. So he should know better. But somehow he doesn't. Do you think you're gonna learn from, from it? Like, are we gonna, are we gonna see you smoke mid once in this half? Uh, no, I don't know the smokes. I okay. learned all the insta smokes for <coughs> window from T side, yeah. but I skipped the elbow smokes. Yeah, that's fair. Because I don't play usually mid. Yeah, if you don't play yeah. mid, I completely understand it. I can show you uh, a really easy lineup. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I sure. mean, you can learn the spawn smokes. That would be the best. Um, but even for me, I have a lineup from like inside a window. You can't really see it where I'm drawing, but. Like, mm -hmm. uh, that just, like, it goes over like this and bounces in and always lands perfect. So, if you just know that one, as long as you're Molotov the first, you can always do this uh, mid-smoke and then you anyway win it. And it's yeah. kind of also a little bit of a better timing sometimes because the ones from spawn, they land super fast. But this one will uh, be up for a few more seconds, like the one that I, that I know. This I like. I like that you push the smoke. It's just kind of unlucky. Oh, that was actually a pretty tough round. Wait, oh, we have someone who crashed or what? Uh, no, I had a package at the door I had to collect. Oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> Such a shame. Yeah, I came back. I was like, guys, are in a 4v1. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy played it well. That's the power of the donor position if you don't have nades for it. Here as well, or like one thing I want to say, if you're gonna play rotation again, especially when you have AWP, if they don't smoke window, playing like headshot angle and just holding this can be really, like, a, you know, this, can be really strong, um, simply because, I mean, you're fighting in a headshot angle with an AWP, that's always good, but another thing that it allows you to is be really fast B rotation, by you playing out Kobe, it means that if the T's are to go fast B now, you are going to be very late. Um, and what a lot of teams do, or even in Pugs, is that they will play like a 4-1 default. So they will be like 4 towards B, and then only just this one guy who is lurking mid late. And so when they get contact on B, this guy lurks out, and that's exactly what would uh, destroy you in this position. Because if you rotate O to B, which you kind of are forced to, then this guy is taking his timing and killing you, potentially. Um, you're also playing in this position with no support whatsoever. So, when I am the guy who's trying to carry, like if I have more elo than uh, my team by a pretty significant amount, I want to try to be in a position where, uh, well, I call it playing a little bit as a safety net. So, what I mean with that is that Instead of playing in any position like hyper aggressive, I would rather sit back a little bit more passively in a spot where I'm able to help everywhere. So like this uh, that I just mentioned is a great position because you can rotate here and immediately help A. You can also rotate here and pretty quickly help B. Um, if you're playing out here or if you're playing close to the smoke here or if you're playing up here, you're just more likely to get opening duels and opening duels can also win your matches, but opening duels, especially if you don't have people who are good at supporting you, can mean a lot of deaths as well. So, it goes yeah. a little bit deep, but yeah. In higher elo, they almost ever run smoke it. And I'm kinda used to it. Yeah. So I want to play an angle that I don't get smoked, and I don't know the need for the, for the that smoke. Like, I saw Monacy needed, but he has like a lineup. Yeah, I can show you the lineup. Uh, let me actually write, I'm gonna... 
write in the can I write in here in the classes chat? I'm gonna write show uh, mid smoke from window and show money she needs. Then if we have more nodes we can go over them as well after. This is all good. You probably would normally hit this shot more cleanly, not through the wall, but you did what you were supposed to and it's a really important round for you guys. Yeah, I'm usually not an upper, I'm a rifler, but there was no uppers. Yeah. And I felt like it's my job to yeah. play the impact gun. I think that is also, like, it's a good attitude to have, because the rotation roll is typically an AWP. But I also think when you are the high elo player, you shouldn't necessarily feel like you have to fill. Like, uh, there are kind of two approaches to carrying in a match, right? And one of them is that if you play your favorite position, you're going to be so much better in that position that you can win more fights. And uh, by winning more fights in your area, like if you're a cave player, for example, a cave player is still someone who can control the game quite a bit because if they go B, uh, you can win a lot of duels there. You can deny them from taking cave control and you can even help fighting mid a little bit if you smoke like left side from uh, out cave and, and peeking mid. Um, and the same, if you're normally a rifler and that's what you're good at, I don't think you should feel like, oh, we don't have an AWP, so I have to play AWP. You can, you can win with five rifles. In fact, I have, I, I feel like on a lot of maps, I prefer even to play a rifle as rotation. Um, so I don't feel like you should, if you are the highest ELO guy on your team, you should not feel like you have to change to fit in the team. Yeah. In CSGO, I was second up in teams, but uh, it feels so much different in CS2, so yeah, it's not as good CS2. as <laughs> it used to be. Yeah. This is a nice peak. Again, there's another round though where if you would smoke here, it would be better because you would potentially be able to peak uh, heaven to B with all and have your teammate watch the smoke. And this this kill on this pistol guy would probably still come your way. Uh, but uh, yeah, you might be able to kill some people with B. This is again, like, I again like what you're doing here, that you're so willing to take fights, because it really makes a big difference. Uh, you can see on the T's they are afraid to, to cross your line. This, I think, though, is a mistake. Like, I understand feeling like, oh, they could maybe lurk out A, but when Psycho kills someone and someone kills Psycho, you know at least half the team was B, and it's way more likely in this moment that the T's are grouping up to go B. If, let's say, you would stay B now and you would get a fight with someone else and then they would start planning on A, well, you guys would be able to go 3 on 2 on the A bomb side, for example, because the other guy would be stuck on B still. Um, I think going so far away from B is a, is a big mistake here. Yeah, I just wanted to clear the lurks, but I agree. I should have stayed. We didn't have enough info, I think. Yeah, I think you could have let, like, number two take that info instead, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. So you guys could be, like, uh, really strong on B. But I get what you mean as well. I'm just trying to explain my thinking, of course. But this is a great kill. And this I also really like from you. Like, you seem like a pretty confident guy, and you seem unafraid of dying, which is a good uh, thing, especially when you're playing AWP, because in a round like this, I definitely think you're doing the right thing. You're t just taking out your pistol and telling your teammate that he can trade you, and you're going to yeah, find I the info. Yeah, but I can tell the way you're running that this is exactly your goal, and that's really good, because what's going to happen now is number 9 is going to kill number 2, probably. And now, because you guys know that he's so far away, if you guys have a kit, you can full stick it. And Sharkfly gets the kill because of this space you have created. But imagine that you guys are, are holding passive angles back here and one is long and stuff and then he gets the kill. Well now maybe he can actually manage to get into a position where he can spam the wall and stuff like this. Um, so you taking your pistol and creating space there, it makes a difference even though you don't get the kill. Uh, I really like to see you do that.
And here again, like, this is a full B-Rush. It would be really nice for you to be able to peek heaven now, but because you guys never smoke mid, you don't give yourself the opportunity to peek this. Ever. Because you always have to worry. Like, to explain in a different way as well, I guess, whenever you guys are smoking heaven, you are telling the T's, okay, don't come mid, but you're also telling the T's, okay, go B. Like, you're making it easier for them to go B. Um, and I think you could kind of do that, but only in the event that you are 3B, for example. Because if you're only 2B, and your utility is funneling them into B, they are going to go B a lot. I really like as well. I think you should keep. I mean, you're not a main orb, but I'm just telling you anyway. I think in this round, now you should be keeping your orb out a little bit more. I think something that could be really good for you here. Yeah, it's hard to draw, but if you would stay at the at the back here and you would be locking down long, or like to uh, to banana, it would allow your teammates to go in this line and then swing out and peek side. But I think what's gonna happen now is you're gonna feel. Like, you need to be the aggressive part, you're gonna peek the side guy and you're gonna die. Yeah, I think I peek it. I don't think I... Oh, yeah. I should've died. <laughs> yeah. And you see, what happened as soon as someone got contact on site was that the banana guy, he swung. And if you would be holding this line, you would kill the guy swinging. And then your two teammates would be able to fight the cave and the side guy. So... I agree. One thing about orping, or like... The, the the thing you did with taking out your pistol in the previous round and saying, oh, trade me, trade me, that's fucking good. Like, not enough AWP players do that. Um, and I can tell here you also feel like you have to be the one creating the space in a, in a way. But sometimes as an AWP, especially when there's kind of two angles, it can be really powerful to be like, okay, I'm, I'm scoping banana. Boom. And then your teammates need to realize, okay, we need to fight the other angles. And then... When they get contact, the guy from Banana, he will always swing and you will kill him, you know. So even if your teammates don't win their fights, you're going to win the fight on the other guy. And then you only have to look one way. Like now, for example, because you kill the Banana guy, you guys can safely assume that it's either cave or sight. And you can see uh, both things uh, at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. And here as well. Pretty fucking sick you get this kill with Deagle, but I think also here you have a better chance of getting this kill if you have an AWP out. But uh, you're really comfortable with this Deagle. That's also good. I like this from you guys. Like you do a full B execute with flashes and smokes. It works out great. You almost got uh, ruined a little bit by the fact that you did it so slowly that the mid player actually came and uh, and got the first kill. But you still managed to win a round, so that's very impressive. And it's a very hard pistol round to play against in Pugs, because a really good counter to that pistol is having dual Berettas on Pillar. But there's not so many people willing to drop dual Berettas on CT uh, in Pugs. Here as well, I think maybe it's not so much you, but I think someone needs to help the donut guy, because... No, we have to bug with people skating. But you do some util, you go out here, and now this 
purple is rushing Donald and Psycho is immediately planning. Um, since there's CT smoke on its way, I think you should right now be trying to run on the right side and go help Donut. Because right now, if your purple guy loses the fight in Donut, it's pretty scary because then the CT can run out and potentially kill your bomb planner and then, then the round could just be over. Um, yeah, I want to hold for CT until smoke pops so he doesn't get swinged. Yeah, and I get that as well, but I think... I think it was more like my fault, but by the time I got like close to sight, you already killed the donut player, so that's why I went and just immediately planted afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I think just you guys should at least have have a better. Maybe you should. Maybe you, for example, Matrix should have had the bomb instead of Psycho, and Psycho should have gone with Purple. That would probably be the ideal way, you know. Um, if we're talking like a a team perspective, because I don't like the idea of. Taking Donut fully alone against low money in a one-on-one -on -one fight, because if you lose that, then that guy who won it can potentially kill the bomb player as well. But if Psycho and Purple would be uh, running together Donut and they have some kind of trade potential and you would go and plant the bomb, this round would have looked much nicer, uh, in my opinion. I think also this is a bad place to be. Um, one, because I think they can almost see you from CT. Um, but also, I think these are just not that good duels for you if there is actually a pistol. Like, if a 5-7 walks out here, he wants to fight you, this is a one-on-one -on -one you can lose. And if uh, they are Tempo right now, I think maybe they can see you. Actually, I, I would say Tempo can see you. So, if you want to play A main here... I think it's better you go inside A main somewhere, like either right side or you can go left side and check on timing. But just standing here, I'm, I'm not that big of a fan of. Like you can see, Tempo here could have, like you have first contact on it, but you you seem unaware. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it's just worth thinking about. Nice spray control. I think I dropped my AK last round. <laughs> oh really? So you had to rebuy it? Oh no. Yeah. That sucks. <clears throat> like, um, this is obviously not like a full level 10 lobby, but this is, uh, this is kind of an example of why you... I mean... Well, I have two kind of things I want to say. Uh, one kind of rule I have is that you should almost never go alone against eco or like low money because a one on one against the pistol can be lost but if you are two together and and they are two you have a really big chance to, to win like a two on two AK versus pistol on range is really easy typically unless the pistols have hit some cracking shots but like Taking a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not a big fan. And you have like number three is alone, number five is alone fighting. D1 here peaks Metox, he dies, and he in fact even leaves the bomb kind of. Um, what I'm trying to say is, when you play against low money, it's almost always better to do some kind of a call where you are sticking together. I'm not saying you have to be five guys all going to the same bomb site immediately, but more just make sure you always have trade potential because this is the way that... Uh, these kind of rounds get lost and then another thing as well uh when i played in sprout we had a uh yeah it sounds actually like a pretty crazy rule but we were playing a lot of mirage for example it was one of our best maps and we would have a lot of byrons like we had cyclone who was uh the igl of the team who's now the coach of mouse bots um he was like a phenomenal caller one of the best i've ever played with for sure and he would be calling like a lot of fakes, for example. So like, uh, go here and we do that and we whatever. But after a while, we actually made a rule that we would never ever fake against Eco. And the reason is that when you play against Eco, if the opponents are stacking and you fake, either the stack is all going to move to the other side. Like, okay, let me try to explain actually. Let's say, let's say the CCs are stacked on A. Now, 
we would fake on B. Well, the CTs have the decision, either we all rotate to B, or we all stay A and hope it's a fake. So by faking, you have actually used utility, but you haven't changed anything for the CTs. They most likely don't use any utility. And if they anyway were going to stack either A or B, well, this was a 50-50. And by faking, well, you're making the CTs take the same 50-50 just at a later time. It won't help you. And even though you guys are not necessarily faking here, what I'm trying to get to is that doing pressure everywhere on the map against low money is just not that impactful. Because, I mean, if you can get openings and stuff like this, if you can get kills or if you can send in a scout, uh, this is obviously something that helps you win the round. But since the CTs don't have any utility, you creating pressure everywhere on the map won't, won't force out any utility. In fact, it will just make you guys use utility. Um, so what I would, for example, much rather see in this round is something like you would be three guys going mid and doing window smoke and doing this Molotov you're about to do in Donut, clearing out Donut, and having two guys outside of A main, for example, something like this. Um, one of the mid players would be holding like <coughs> would be holding heaven. Um, that way you always play in pairs. You play two guys outside A main, you play three guys in mid. Something like this. You can still split up. You don't have to be five together. But you need to have one kind of unified goal. Um, and it doesn't have to be after the first five or ten seconds around. Just I am not a big fan of this spreading out where everyone is playing alone. Um, I've talked a lot about this round now. And it's possible you guys still win it. But in fact, we see it here as well. Because you guys are not sticking together. Now this guy goes, takes a weapon. He finds the bomb. He gets like super advanced position. He's gonna flank mid now, probably get a kill. Ooh, okay, he's not full flanking actually, but he should get a trade now. Okay, it seems like he's missing his timing. Yeah, he is. But now, number nine is also in advanced position. And he's also gonna fuck up. But like, there were many things here that could have made it so you guys lost the round. And it came really a lot down to how you approached the round. Not so much about the duels. Because the majority of duels here you actually won. And even still it was so, so scary. Um, what do you think about this round, Matrix? Uh, I should have asked for flashes at least. And I... I don't know. I shouldn't have been that aggro maybe. I thought they would get confused when they mollied and then I insta-smoked them. I mean, it's smoke the molly, so I thought I could like wide them, but yeah, I think the support flashes would have literally destroyed them. Like I don't know if everybody knew how to throw them in this team, so I don't think I asked for them. Mm. And like, it was too aggro. What do you, I would say. what do you do when you take mid? You do a, uh, a molotov here, right? Like SCT. Yeah. And then you immediately HE in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is also exactly what the CTs do. They do a Molotov and then they actually do double HE. So before you even see anyone, you're already on 10 HP. And I think yeah, that's true. it's true what you said about the support flashes maybe making a difference. But I think um, there's a big focus on mid, on ancient in general. And so it's a really common first buy round. Like this is the first buy round of the match. It's really common for CTs to heavy mid fight in the first buy round. Because... They want to kind of set uh, the, like, they want to give you either the illusion or, like, show you that mid is not something you can get for free, you know? Like, they want to yeah, heavy agree. take it so that you can't you can take it. And I think um, it's also th something I learned in Sprout, but, like, um, I, had, I had this thing where I like to start apps on Inferno with AWP. And I remember in one match that we played, I said in the first bar round, guys, I want to start apps with AWP. And then uh, Dennis, I think it was, he said, okay, but why? And then I said, yeah, I have a feeling they're coming apps. And then he said, no, let's not do that. Let's play default in the first bar round. And a lot of pros actually do this where the first bar round, you want to play pretty default because you don't know what you're up against. Like, 
the way you're playing here, which is hyper aggressive, it's really a coin flip. Like it's also kind of a 50-50. Either it works or you get absolutely demolished. Like it, it purely depends on what the CTs are doing. And you have no information about what the CTs are doing because you have no previous rounds to base it off of. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The, on Ecos, I got so I got the illusion of them giving us mid for free. So I was like, I should take it as soon as possible. But I forgot they didn't have any buy. Like yeah. they had no money. So in my head, it was just illusion of them giving us mid for free. But I got it really deject, I guess. Yeah, and let's say you would play this first buy round with a little bit more caution. Let's say you're playing outside mid and you're feeling it out a little bit more. And you hear them smoke and molo and double he and use flashes and stuff like the next buy round you would never rush mid right like yeah that would i'll be keep crazy. that in mind yeah i i had like i didn't even think about like buy round being like the the run where you fill out the game actually i don't know yeah it i'll keep that in mind from now on. it can be it can be a good lesson to learn because it took me a long time um uh, Another thing as well I learned from Cycron is that he had this theory that on the first buy round as CT you should always do your strongest buy round. Because if you can win the first buy round you have such a good start to the game. And that's probably why these CTs, maybe they don't, they, they, they definitely don't think this deep, right? But thinking about it a little bit like in through the many layers is that they're thinking, okay, how can we win the first round? Because this is fucking important. And then they think, okay, heavy mid fight. Um, yeah, we can see, I'll but I imagine that they are going to heavy mid fight next buy round as well, because I think this is their go to buy round or like something that they like to do. But yeah, you should you keep in mind for sure. I think it's really it took me many, many, many years to learn it. But as soon as you hear it one time, it kind of makes sense. Um, hey, it does. Like I want to see uh, it's not really a buy round for the CCs here. And here as well, you are doing right now what the T's were doing to you. The CT's don't smoke mid, so you take this angle, you try to get free kill. And yeah, I also miss this shot always, I don't know why. Somehow this shot is so hard in this angle. I feel like at least. But here again, you guys are splitting up. Your banana guy was playing alone, he died, no trade. Your cave player is playing alone. He has no op opportunity to trade. Your mid player is playing alone and your A player is playing alone. And now you're playing alone banana as well. So now everyone, no matter what, will always take one-on-one -on -one fights. And now we lose another one-on-one -on -one fight. With no trade potential. Now you're already 3-5 and five in a buy round. Which is rough. Yeah, I do always say that against Eco we should go together. And I think 4 and 3 we should all go together and trade. That's like my go-to, but I don't think we can get full coordination on on impacts. There was, there no. was miscommunication on B, because uh, I asked for help on RAM, and the cave player mollied himself off of cave. So I just got to be one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's tough then. But this is like just, I mean, Part of the reason why you want to stick together is exactly because miscommunication is just likely to happen in pucks, especially at lower levels, you know. So something as simple as just walking together means that you have a chance to help each other, you know. So this round is... Okay, maybe there is something to play for. He has OP yeah, here. Psycho opened the whole round, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was a really good kill in just this is also good. Nice. Nice, what a god. Nice, okay. Well, that works, guys. Well played. <laughs> Just to look at the, the rest of my Digo shots after that first game. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, don't worry, I won. But look now, let's watch it now. Now you guys are actually sticking together. You're playing on this 4 and one that we talked about. And you have the bomb towards B. Let's see how this one pans out. Like even here, the guy is a little bit alone up banana. But there's way more trade potential now. And a missed smoke as well.
But here, like, you guys are shooting this guy together, you know? <coughs> and you're sticking so close to each other, even if you die here. Uh, even if you die here, you're gonna die three. No, this yeah. is obviously pretty unlucky. I think it comes a lot down to the failed smoke, because um, the smoke makes it yeah. so you guys peak the same angle at the same time, kind of. I remember this round. It was also <coughs> to me lagging out and getting stuck on Matrix as well. And that's where we got the double headshot. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. That's sad. Good that you win it though. Alright, buy round. No, still not buy round for CT. The CTs have some weird buys in this match, but it's also been going very much back and forth in, in many of these rounds. Here again, look, this is what I like to see Sharkfly. You and Metrox, you're now playing together. So instead of D1 pushing and killing Metrox alone, now you're together, you kill him, and you get advantage. You guys are working together in mid. But now Psycho, who is the only guy who's alone, he dies. And now there's no trade potential. And part of the part of the thing as well in, in Antique rounds is that not only is there no trade potential, this is also now a free upgrade for the CTs. Like they can get a better weapon, because no one can guard it. This is a great kill by Metrox though. Really impactful. And here again, the only guy who's going alone now dies, CT upgrades, and no trade. And if the tempo guy takes the right timing here, you guys have lost. But he didn't. So that's good. Okay, now buy round. I have a question about this, uh, this round from like from my perspective. Um, so I this just wanted round? to lurk. Oh, the, the other yeah, or the previous, previous. round. Sorry, yep. I just wanted to lurk to get the M4 on B and saw the three guys on B, and then that's when they just sort of pushed me. Yeah. Um, I, is that I'm thinking, is that just the wrong thing to do? I should have just gone with the team because I don't think we actually knew if they're on an eco here or not. Oh, it looks so weird. Well, f I think you should. Assume they're an eco here because you're one alive, they rebuy, they win with three alive. So when they lose with three alive, they're definitely rebuying. Um, well, actually, they, they yeah, they should have rebought here, I guess. And then they had some kind of a mixed buy with Deagle and M Force. And so now, like, they had majority M Force last round, so you should probably realize. But you could, you could realize. But I think you going B is not bad. It's just the fact that you are alone B. Like, okay. if if someone would have been with you B, this would have been completely okay. The same way that if you would have been mid, it would have been completely okay. It's just the fact that, uh, I mean, it's really easy to be a coachman when this is so true. But like, every time someone has been alone in these kind of rounds, they die. Like, now... You died, and now this Metrox guy, for example, he's gonna be the only guy not going through mid. And now he is getting the wrong tempo and dying. This is full fuck though. But yeah, that's still good. You guys win the round. Okay. And now is the first CT by round. And I wanna. I'm curious to see if they're gonna fight mid heavy. Like we talked about. And this is exactly what they do actually. Like they start three guys mid, they leave full A. This is the first real buy round the CTs have had since that first buy round. Ooh, this is rough. Rough start. <coughs> I think um, you Matrix, you could have probably been more like... You should either probably wait for Psycho to be in a position where he can help you better. Oh well. Yeah, I guess if the CTs control mid, like they are, I think peaking cave dry is not that good. Because if they if you kill the cave player, it's possible they just peak heaven and kill you right back. Or it's possible that they will peak as you are peaking the cave player, in which case you're also dead. Uh, and um, like, 
yeah, it's just, yeah. I guess it's just too big of a risk. I think if you want to PK that, you should like. Yeah, I don't know. Do it with a Molo, maybe. But in general, I would just say if the CTs have full control of mid and your teammates are outside this smoke, like behind the smoke, uh, peeking cave is rarely a good choice unless you think you really have like a good timing because you will feel very rushed doing it because they can peek you from heaven. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what it is around. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think it's really cool that you are so... Um, Honest with yourself, Matrix. Like, yeah, I tried to do review on my own, but it's hard. I know, but like, still less mistakes. A, a lot of a lot of people, if I would be telling these things about them in a group, they would be explaining why everything they're doing is okay or why they were doing what they're doing. You know. Uh, oh, I want to improve. Yeah. I want to make mistakes. Yeah. Because that shows me what to improve. Yeah, but that's the right attitude. That's why you are two point two kilo, bro. And why you will be 2.5k soon. This is, Thank you. <laughs> this is a really good kill as well. Um, do you have a mono here? You do. Okay. I will write down a quick note. So yeah, that's the end of the game. Um, we can do some, some questions. As I said, guys, I'm feeling pretty ill. So we won't do as many questions as normal, maybe. I have some notes to go over, but people can ask questions while we uh, load in. And, and before we talk about the notes. I have one. Um, yeah. So I feel like I'm still somewhat a beginner at the game. Just my face to level. Yeah. Should I just focus on aim and mechanics? Uh, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think until a certain point, yes. Um, I think I've been doing yeah. like I've been so like the days I don't pug, I do like different <coughs> routines I see on like YouTube or YouTube Shorts. Yeah. And I just kind of do those for like an hour, and I just like stop playing, and then I go into a, a practical deathmatch and grind it out. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's like a productive use of my time. Well, I think just when you are when you are young, <laughs> so to say, like it doesn't have to be in age, but like young in CS if you're new at CS in a way or like still sort of on a beginner level. Um, the best thing you can do for yourself is just put in the time. Like so many people come into my chat, you know, and uh, will be like, oh, what can I do to improve? And those people who ask those questions, and I don't blame them, but essentially they are asking me, um, like, if they can if they can cheat their way forward in CS in a way. Like they want to take the easy path. It's like uh, me going to like a football coach or something and saying, "How do I get as good as Messi?" And it's like a million components, right? It's not that easy. So when you're not that great at Counter Strike yet. Like any hour you spend playing the game is productive because something like uh, getting a feel for the mechanical aspect of Counter Strike, that's not something you can watch a YouTube video about and understand. You have to learn it by doing it. Um, learning how to use utility and stuff like this, that's maybe something you can learn a little bit about on YouTube the same way you can learn about how to practice your aim and stuff. But yeah, a lot of getting good at CS is simply just doing and putting in the time. So. I think it's not necessarily wrong to prioritize just playing the game, like playing this mission, doing these things. Yeah, I mean, I have a, I have days where I pug and I have days where I practice and learn the game. Yeah, but you could, uh, you could mix them together, you know, like do both in one day if you have time for yeah, it. Yeah, well, I learned, I learned about like when like learning stuff. You ideally don't want to like put in the practice when you're learning something. You ideally want to have a day off of, or at least six hours from. From what you've learned, so it can absorb into your brain. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, there's days I just don't bug and I just try to learn the game. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, but I always try my best to make make the most out of my pug days. Like, pug three, four games a day, maybe five. 
I'm sorry, but shouldn't you apply the things you learn in game? That's how I learn at least. Like if I learn a new util, I try to well, like, get that map well, yeah. and face it, well, you, and well, yeah, I no, try to I, apply it. I remember that. So like the thing is like when you learn, like let's say I learn like a cool lineup uh, for ancient or something, like I'll just put like a couple couple minutes into practice, and then um, I just try. I have a pretty solid memory, I guess, because I would remember to use it. Uh, in a in like a eureka fashion, like oh wait, I just remembered I can do this. Yeah, I mean, I think that six hour period or whatever you talked about that happens typically while we sleep as well. Like you can do like a big grind of let's say eight hours with. Um, I I would always recommend breaks and make sure you get good food and enough to drink and stuff like this. But typically, you won't improve on the day. Like you'll be laying there in bed and maybe you're sleeping or maybe you're thinking about what you went through today in cs um and that can be when you actually sort of apply what you've learned like where you actually improve but i think definitely you gotta sort of put in the work to have something that you can apply if that makes sense and i think just going on a practice server for five to ten minutes uh whatever throwing some mutual and and calling it a day I think that will not be a fast way to improve like especially when you're not that high elo not calling it a day but um well like i'd remember i'd recite it like before i pug right i would recite what i learned yeah and then go into, go into pugging yeah yeah i don't just like go straight into the game and not just go into the game dry no i would i would like first warm up and then recite what i learned yeah and then head into the game yeah i mean so it's not just them as a practice and go away with it mm. i mean that sounds good then if that's uh, how you do it because it sounds like pretty much how everyone does it like you practice something and you use it in pugs uh, yeah um yeah, I'm, yeah uh if you want to see my screen this, this is a very cursed uh very cursed knife and glove combo i can try but is it just for the knife and glove combo? Yeah, this is really cursed. This, oh. is, uh, this is my boyfriend's account. I just can't believe. I use this as my ult account. I guess, you know what? Maybe I should just like, queue the matchmaking maps into what I learned. Just go use it. Yeah. Uh, I just don't like, I don't like smurfing. Cause I'm just playing in like silver and just playing against like really bad players. Mm. Yeah, I get you, I get you. But. Uh, maybe maybe I should actually like use that as like a way to just get some stuff down, just hard queue for one map. Because he told me to do all these placements. That's what a lot of uh, pro teams do as well when they just start out. They will have uh, one full day where they only play Mirage, for example, and then have one full day afterwards where they only play this other map and stuff like this. Um, but anyway, I want to get to the notes real quick. Um, Matrix, are you here? Because it's probably mostly... Well, it's important for everyone, but yeah, I want to make sure, sure you're here. Of course. Good. I'm so here, I'm here. What I like to do is I will come over and I just... Like, you don't have to be super specific, but if you just go into this wall, you see this hole in the in the tree? Like, if you aim in the middle here, this one goes over and it lands all the way deep. Um, and that's when, if you then come out here and you just do like a Molotov like this, this is what I talked about. There is like only a tiny gap where the guy can stand. So if you flash here, or even if you don't, if you just are good at preeming this, this is like uh, free every time. And by doing this smoke, you make it so the T's don't know if you crossed and they don't know where you're playing from, you know? Um, yeah. So that's what I like to do. Also, so yeah. Sorry, can you do it again one more time so I can like... So in here and in the yeah, gap. There. Okay, thank you. No I'll learn the insta smokes as well because I think it's very useful. Yeah, especially if you like to play rotation, and if you play some games where you have to carry, being able to throw this and then like start B, for example, can be really strong if you're playing like AWP. Um Otherwise, yeah. if you want to do the double molos because you were doing it, but you were kind of doing it like like these two molos, you know. Um, if you want to do the double molotovs, the guy with the best spawn has to aim like here. A little bit above and run. That way you get the deep molotov. And then the second guy, like let me throw this one again. And then the second guy can do this molotov. That way you molotov everything out here. And then you can flash left side. 
you can come out. If they're not peeking, okay, you smoke the deep Molotov and now you win mid as well. If you want to do it with double Molotovs, <laughs> you absolutely, in my opinion, need to have the first Molotov be the deep Molotov. So that they also don't have this information, you know what I mean? Like, as you can see, yeah, they all I can know. stand here, so... Um, for the nade here... Uh, I think it was actually Ghost who taught me this. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just standing kind of like in the mi like right around here and and aiming like here, I guess, and doing double click. Mm. My mom was it? In the the first one. Yeah. Like here? Like this? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Not yeah. all the way to the back, just like yeah. a step forward yeah. from the back. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, fucking bitch. In like this? No, the the brick line thing. Yeah, down. Bang! Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yes. Yeah. And then the last note I had was just the one where uh, you were boosted box, oh. and you killed this guy. So when you kill a lone player and they are on a default round, the other B player will always be playing like probably pillar or inside cave or cubby. And so I think a really good thing to do is um, I like to do this at least if you just like throw a deep moon of and, and like get it to land anywhere here this makes the CT rotation so much more difficult and because they cannot stand here they cannot fight this they either have to use a smoke on this where they still then cannot fight or they have to run through it where they take massive amounts of damage so if you get like if you ever end up in a situation again where you get this kill you can go and instant moons of this and you can even hold it a little bit if you want, but then you can like, you can take this angle or something where you can hold an angle and your, your teammates can move up. Because as long as this Molotov is burning, they can kind of run and only hold this side. They don't need to worry about anyone backline. And what you were trying instead was, you were doing the same, but just with the smoke. And I think that should come later. Like you take the, you take a kill from the box, and then you try to do something like this. But if I'm a CT and this smoke comes, I think yours was also failed a bit. Like, even if it's perfect smoke, let's say it's here, in my opinion, this is, an, this is an invitation. I call it the red carpet on some maps. But like, this in my mind is a red carpet where, okay, they killed my long player, I'm now running through the smoke, now I'm long player and they don't expect it. And then if the the guy, wait, what the hell did I just do? K set time or reset? What the fuck? I just clicked on something on my... Uh, uh, like my thing, you know? Um, I want to show one more thing. So, when... When it, the CTs rotate from A, which is something good for all of you as well, if you flash like this, this flash just goes high in the back, and it doesn't really matter how you're standing, you always get annoyed by this flash. Like... So... As you can imagine, Matrix, if you smoke this and the guy runs through here, that's what a uh, what a good player would do. You just run through this, comes along, and as he's coming here, if he has good teammates as well, he's gonna get these flashes offered. Like they can, they are running away from A, and then they're gonna say, "I can flash, I can flash long, I can flash long, boom!" And then this guy with these flashes swings and peaks, and he destroys your team here, kind of, you know. Yeah, I agree. I don't <coughs> know. I mean. I knew I can throw the model like that, but because of ancient walls being so scuffed and I don't know, maybe they fixed it in CS2, but in CSGO, whenever I threw, bounced the molly off the wall, it would like land in air or something. Mm, okay. So I wasn't sure if that molly is possible, but now I know. Yeah, I mean, it is like, but you could also even just aim above this and slow walk, you know, or something. Like, there will always be a way where you don't even yeah. have to hit a wall. I think even if you like give it. Uh, give it a lot of speed. It will. Yeah, this is not ideal. Yeah, but the first one works. Yeah. It's fine. I don't know it now. And yeah, this is now I'm going a little bit crazy, but yeah, I even found out as well. You can actually do like a. At least I have some lineup for it in CSGO. There's actually a way to like pull us off backline from here. Where you would be able to. Uh, have the orb lock this 
like we talked about already, that like if there are two angles basically, like when your teammates go up and peek this, now the guy swings, the orb kills him, and then this is already burning from uh, like some guy lurking cave. I mean, I think even more useful Molotov, at least that I throw, is Brokey Molly from door. Like here? Uh, oh. Yeah, it lands on the, like, in default, a little bit more yeah. to the right. Yeah, there. Like, like, like from there. One. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, I think you, smoke goes there and the Molly goes on the left brick. Like yeah, bro. I uh, if I'm not wrong. I th yeah, but you're I'm probably sure. right. I think even I'm doing this one, but I <laughs> here this one is always so. In the yeah, the smoke is on the leaf. This one is always so finicky. I find, and she's going worse. Yeah, but yeah. I think you stand there and then uh, leave like a brick below, left, yeah. left below, yeah. left below. It. Oh here. Yeah. A little more. Uh, yeah, that but the edge of the brick left. Like this. Yeah, it should be like that. Maybe a little bit above. Oh, I'm not sure. Goes through the wall. Okay. Yeah, I think it's oh, yeah. really powerful. And yeah. there's on the first lineup that you lined it up, you throw smoke there, and it's yeah. like a really good. Yeah. No, no, yeah, like on the funny. on the leaf there. Yeah, yeah, yeah leaf there and then the molly. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And it should be very powerful. Yeah. Could you show the the cinema smoke or the heaven smoke? Uh, like the, from CT, you mean? I mean, uh, I mean, as uh, window, mid window, I'm bad. Uh, ST? Yeah, ST. Well, I think most people who are serious about it, they do it on lineups. Like, uh, I don't even have a jump throw forward right now, because I haven't even set it up. It's definitely something I should do. There are some different lineups. I remember in CSGO, what I would always do, this won't probably work, because I don't have the lineup, but I would see, like, uh, there's this line, and I would see the small branch here, and then I would do like jump throw forward, and this would be a consistent way to late smoke window, but it won't work now because I don't have the bind, like I have to time it perfectly, and I think in subtech that's not so easy, but um, this is one lineup that probably worked, yeah, this is roughly how it lands, um, but I definitely recommend if you want to get good at ancient, you should learn the smokes on spawn. Uh, I just haven't been bothered. Also, a little bit because, yeah, it depends a little bit on what role you play. Like, there are some AWP players who throw window smoke from spawn a lot on Ancient because they typically don't, there are not so many aggressive peaks on Ancient. Um, but, yeah, I think I can show you maybe one cool smoke if I remember it, but I'm not sure if I do. I feel like it's like this, but probably someone knows it better than me. goes into cave? Yeah. This kind of worked, I guess. This one. So you kind of smoke off this side of cave. And you can cross if you want. And the CT can't really play. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, I think let's do one last question. If someone has something. I, I have a question. Yeah? But it's, I don't know if it's going to be easy to answer. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm finally now like kind of going back to my peak of level 8. Yeah. Um. Again, but um. I'm sort of like I mean you sort of saw it in that game. I'm falling into a lot of like bad back and back, go, falling back into a lot of bad habits. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just like I'm wondering like what's sort of like the main difference between level like say seven to level nine because mm -hmm. I'll be sort of in that middle bracket. Yeah. Um. Because I I'm already really struggling. I know I know one of my bad habits is just purely relying on him. Yeah. Instead of map control or nades or teammates and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, no, continue if you... If but yeah, I, I just, I, yeah, I just feel like I'm sort of going back to being stuck and uh, I don't really know what to do from here. <laughs> mm. I get you. Um, well, the thing with that kind of question is that it's ha kind of hard for me to tell because I don't really play with a lot of level 6s or level 9s, you know. I don't really have enough data in my brain to tell the difference, basically. Um, so I can't really answer that part. But um, what I guess I could kind of offer you is that uh, now we did a demo review of a, of, a, of a level 10 player. But if you want, we could uh, do 
next session or or maybe in two sessions we could do like a demo review of of you or someone comparable in skill level like uh, matrix did a lot of things really well you know like you could see on his reactions for example on the b side that it was very consistently good always when his teammates died long he would always come and fight us immediately which i think is a really big thing um because if he would be a pussy here and and hide and now his cave flag is overrun and they have the whole site and they take long he, the round is lost so these are the things that i'm looking for like consistently good decision making matrix also made mistakes right um but yeah. if we would watch a level six player for example um it would probably be more valuable for a level six to watch as well you know what i mean like if yeah. i would do a pro demo review and i would say oh Santaris is so good because he's killing them that won't help a level six that much but if we do a level six demo review and i'm talking about how i would approach these rounds uh it might give you a lot and i think it would be foolish of us to only focus on the sort of high level students you know what i mean uh, yeah i mean I, it's, nice I, to, it's nice to see uh, an example of yeah having everything down yeah yeah that's true as well i mean i think this was a good demo from matrix i think you're playing well but uh, i think it could be it could be uh yeah interesting to watch a, a lower level demo and see what i would be able to see in in that and and i think it would help someone who is around that level more you know yeah because i know like i did my own sort of demo reviews as well trying to spoil some of my own mistakes yeah. but i think i do what you said um which is like i sort of give excuses on why i did certain things which are just i should just admit i made the mistake and move on from that mm -hmm. or try and learn from that yeah um like there's very like there's glaringly obvious mistakes i'll go like yeah okay that, that was just being stupid but there's like little ones where it's like okay no i i feel like i did the right thing but but I bet it's you there will be a million I mean, things that like, I see yeah. in your game yeah, that yeah. you don't even realize are mistakes, you know? Yeah, that's that's what that's what I was trying to say. It's just like I, mean, I don't think those were really excuses, but more so like explanations on why you did that versus what you should have done. Yeah, I think that's also true to some extent. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have a question. I just have like, do you have like a YouTube channel or something? Cause yeah, I do. You said you're recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll search you up. Yeah. I know I watch Fe Phoenix or something like that. He's really doing similar content. Okay. Now I'm not uh, so familiar, but I have like a million tutorials. I've been making tutorial content for 10 years or something. Yeah, I'll stuff. check you out. Yeah. Thank you. That'd be great. Um, for now, guys, I think I'm going to have to end the session because <laughs> I... We've actually, anyway, been at it for 90 minutes, even though I said I was only going to do uh, probably an hour because I'm pretty <laughs> ill. But um, yeah. It was as always really fun, but I have to get up and drive my girlfriend in s seven hours, and I still need to do some stuff. So uh, I'm gonna definitely have to head out now. But uh, I appreciate you all for coming, and uh, I hope that it was helpful to see a demo review as well. Not that we just only do theory um, during my coaching sessions. Thank you. Thank you, Nato. Thanks.